Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. Uh, delighted to have everyone here. Let's get started. It's the 9th of April. Proposed topics for our agenda today are uh, open action items, the Windows installer, platform roadmap, Series 390, or System 390, and PowerPC infrastructure progress. I guess, should we also include there and ARM64, or do you want that, is that better do it done separately, Alex? Um, They're really two different things. So maybe yeah, we don't, we don't really need any special agents for that, so it's kind of a little separate. Right, okay. So ARM64 status report. Uh, we may do the Java upcoming, not sure that'll, that depends if Matt's able to join us. Uh, if not, we'll defer it for two weeks. And Docker PR status and progress. Anything else that needs to be added to the agenda before we start working through it? All right, let's go then. So open action items. Oh, this is me hanging my head in shame again. We've got... Let's let me copy those and we will then update the text to note what the actual status is. So open a JEP for Docker operating system support. I still haven't done that. Uh, Windows support policy JEP still pending. Windows installer code signing. Alex, you want to share with us today? Yeah, it's it's working. The the um, automated. Um, release process that Olivia has been working on is signing the installer. Um, they're working on the final stuff to make everything available through that process. Excellent, thank you. Very good, all right. So certificate has been received and deployed. So should we just mark this one as done? Big victory? Yeah, I think so. Excellent, thanks very much, Alex. Thank you, thank you for your heroics on that. All right, then Docker Build PR uh, rework. This one, I think the, the, there is still intense interest for it and we'll continue working. Alex, anything you want to report there? So it turns out there are no changes to the Jenkins file, so we didn't need a shadow PR. So I, I just closed it. Great, excellent. Okay, and we, we do have the, three, the System 390 and the PowerPC uh, equipment that's been donated or, or lent to us by IBM and it's ready to go. We just need to, to get it connected. All right, on to Windows installer then. Or Alex, anything else on the Docker build PR, rework PR? I, I, need to go, I need to go back and review it some more, I mean, it's a, some of the build scripts are fairly large changes. Um, so I just want to do a local checkout and do a build and, and see, see how it compares. Great. All right. Thank you. Windows installer is next. So um, there has been some minimal testing done by um, Oleg. Um, he found an issue and filed it. So that's what Sladen was referring to before the meeting. Um, so I, yeah. I'm just, working on fixing that. Sladen, if you, if you are interested, there is a, a PR on the Jenkins CI packaging repository. Okay. Um, it's got a long, uh, there's a branch on that um, uh, repository. It's like infra 910 is the start of the branch name. And that's where all of the, the changes have been um, kind of put into and a pull request mm -hmm. made for okay, the new packaging cool. setup. So if you have, if you want to go look and see what the changes are you're you're welcome to do that okay yeah definitely well and there is a there is likewise a pr uh, to that same repository Jing, uh, for tests of uh, linux uh, install and service checks okay Hey Mark, uh, what's what's the general like status of uh, nine ten? 
Have uh, you guys gotten it working or like a proof of concept going? I, I've been seeing a bunch of IRC chats about like the automation, automated yes. releases. Yeah, it's well, it's it's making really great progress actually. So what we what Alex had reported earlier is the Windows installer code that is in the context of the Infra 910 PR. Oh, really? Okay. Jeez. Yeah. So yeah. The core release project is is looking is making dramatic progress thanks to the availability now of the signing certificates. Yeah, that um, was holding us up quite a bit for a while. Yeah. So maybe we ought to put that let's put that as a separate top level item, Jim, just so that we because that's a good one to report on and give some guesses. So Mark wait and Mark and Alex. Now um will that uh like you know once once the core release is all all good and uh, closed out will that affect how we do releases of the the docker images and now it we does, have it does not they are distinct processes so the okay. core release project is focused on msi installer the jenkins war file and mm -hmm. the debian package and the rpm packages Two different variants of RPM, but it's not touching the Docker release project. So that that is still yet to be done. Okay. Yeah, I think we would want to at some point when a release is done, kick off something within the Docker build to build for that new version that has been released. But that yeah. hasn't been fully discussed at this point. I think. Right. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking something along the same lines, like trigger something off that pipeline, which then triggers our build pipeline, uh, right. which that PR um, that I have open still m might help with that. Um, but we're still working on that, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on looking at, uh, at your PR a bit more in depth and doing some local builds and stuff like that, just to get a little bit more understanding of the changes. Yeah, no, no, no rush. I know a lot of people are working on nine ten, so I'm getting that up and going. Great. So, and Jim, I'm gonna. I've moved the series three ninety, the system three ninety um, topic earlier in the list, so that we make sure we get there. Excellent. Okay. Anything else, Alex, on Windows installer? Um, no. I mean, hopefully, we'll just it'll just get out in the open and be used more and. I'm sure there'll be issues found and so forth. So looking forward to it. It's been a long time since I started that work. <laughs> exactly. So it needs more testing. Um, yeah, good. Um, in particular, now, do you have any concern with regard to the 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 32-bit versus 64-bit transition? So this is giving us now the ability on Windows to use a 64-bit JDK? Correct. So it'll use whatever JDK. So if the person wants to use a 32-bit JDK, they're welcome to. Um, they can put in the path to that JDK if they if they want to use a 64-bit. It will um, allow that as well. I mean, there's nothing within. It's basically just setting up to run the Jenkins.war file from the Windows Service Wrapper. Windows Service Wrapper is .NET, so it'll run on either 64-bit or 32-bit. So. So, so it, it would. Am I correct in this note that it would allow someone to choose an Open J9 JDK if they wanted? If that was installed, they just they would specify the path. Yes. Okay. So, Jim, that might be a place where where your your contacts may be interested in. Oh, well, shall we do some exploratory testing on this thing with Open J9 on Windows? Yeah, I. I, I never, I never really touched the windows, but, uh, so that would be really interesting to see. Okay. All right. So, and right now it's, we're not testing that as far as I know. I'm, my focus is on adopt open JDK mm -hmm. and 64 bit and we'll continue that way because that's, that'll be the 90% or more of the execution environments. All right. Anything else then Alex? No, I think that's all in Windows Installer. Okay, the core release project then. So this is Infra 910. And uh, this has been, this is, the, the concept here is, let's not require Kosuke Kawaguchi as the only person who can release, deliver a release of Jenkins. 
and and it's been an interesting ride. So the uh, code signing certificate has been received and is deployed. Um, builds, uh, test builds are running. Test builds are being tested and being checked. Um, we found some issues in those checks. So Alex, you noted a Windows issue detected by Oleg. Yeah, it wasn't so much part of the core release projects, but it, he was able to test the installer and found the issue, so. Right, which is part of this transition. And I found a Linux issue um, that um, that's Alex is working on the, the issue from Oleg and the Linux issue has been found, our Linux issue has been found and Olivia has already fixed it and delivered new, new code for that. Um, we're, there are still many compatibility checks that are needed, um, you know, packaging compatibility. We're, we're changing a bunch of things and therefore we got to check all sorts of things aren't broken. Um, it's looking promising though, and we'll continue, continue building and testing until we're done. Any questions there? All right, so then let's go on to Series 390, Assistant 390, I keep saying the wrong way, and PowerPC. So I've confirmed that the power, the power infrastructure is now directly accessible. Awesome. Yeah, because uh, I think we, we we punched a hole in for you guys for the SSH. So no jump post, right? No jump post required. Thanks awesome. very much. I'm managing my my PowerPC agents with with the usual SSH agents plugin that I use with every other plugin with every other agent. So you've made my life much simpler. And S three ninety X agents. Agents are also directly accessible, and uh, and and both of them are running on in test. What we don't yet have is need to attach those to ci.jenkins.io. And Olivier, that will need to likely need to wait. It's currently delayed by the uh, core, auto, core release automation project. So my suspicion is we're still a, a week or two away from touching that. Okay. Now I yeah. could I could do a, a spot connection of those, uh, you know, as a one-off rather than systematically connecting them with the, the automation but my thought was better to do it the right way and, and be sure that Olivier is involved. So I'm not the single point of failure. Yeah, no. And, and uh, that's what I got from the IRC chats. Uh, Olivier um, was like, Hey, we're focusing on, you know, nine ten for right now. And we'll, we'll swing it back around for connecting things. Great. All right. Anything else on S390 or the PowerPC project? No. Okay, so next topic was platform roadmap. And here I wanted to show what Oleg has created for us. Thanks very much, by the way. I think it looks gorgeous. If we look, go down to governance and structure, project roadmap. Here, let's make this big enough to actually read. What you'll see is a working draft of the Jenkins roadmap visualized. And if we look at packaging and platform support, here's how we phrased it. Docker for 390, Docker for ARM, as the columns here are current, things that we're working now, Docker for PowerPC 64 and a new Windows installer. And then Docker for ARM and multi-platform Docker. Now actually thinking about it, have I placed the multi-platform Docker images in the wrong location? Because aren't they required in order to do S390 and PowerPC? Uh, no, you, you can have standalone images on your, um, 
uh, what's the unofficial Jenkins repository? Experimental. Yeah, it, you can have them on those, or you can just pull down the specific image using tags. Uh, the multi-platform kind of manifests uh, will allow you to be like Jenkins LTS, right? Uh, which then it will know and look up what architecture you're running on and pull down the right corresponding image. Okay, so, so so this makes sense. Then we could do we can do Docker for S390 as as a specific tag first, and then later we could do multi-platform Docker images to make it easier to use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. All right. So now what I had done to, to express that is I'd created three epics in the JIRA tracker uh, for S390, for PowerPC, and for ARM64, figuring we'll use the epics to, to capture, the, capture related tickets. Uh, as one of the items, there were a number of, op oops, it's already here, OpenJ9, bug reports that I thought, oh, we may need to be aware of these J9 bug reports, particularly on S390, where J9 is is the best way to run it with Java 8. With Java mm -hmm. 11, I understand that that you can run at full performance with Java 11, even with Adopt Open JDK, but with JDK 8, you've got to use J9. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is actually really good, so I can <clears throat> take those. Have those been... Um sent over to the j9 like bug tracker on github or anything like that no right now they're they're Internal. they're just open they're open and many of them just need to be evaluated right yeah, okay. i'm not even sure if they i'm not sure if they're still real if they if for instance this one that says uh job sitting in the queue waiting for the next available executor probably just needs somebody to sit down with it and test it see if they can duplicate it, and if not, propose to close it as cannot duplicate it. Okay. So, Alex, you were saying something, and I interrupted. No, I was just agreeing with you. <laughs> uh, Mark, do you mind um, pasting in the, um, the roadmap URL? Oh, you bet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, I think it's still, uh, Oleg still correctly considers it um, prototype. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's still in under evaluation. So it's not a, not being, it's not been put into the, into the, um, what do you call it? Into the, the dashboard. What, how embarrassing. The billboard. No, what is it? Yeah. Site map. No, no, no. It's it's this thing right here. When I go to this page, this scrolly thing at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> Forgive my not remembering the word for it. That's really pathetic. Jumbotron. Jumbotron. Oh, bless you. Who said that? That was excellent. Thank you. Yes, it's not in the jumbotron yet. When as it becomes more more clear, I suspect we will add it to the jumbotron. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. All right. So open J9 issues need investigation. And particularly on S390, that's that's crucial with JDK 8. Now, do you have a sense, Jim? Is JDK 11 more popular on S390? Or is it is JDK 8 still a popular thing like it is in the 64-bit the uh, Intel world? Uh, I think both of them are still very popular. Um, I couldn't really say either or. Um, okay. I mean, if, if the underlying application requires eight, then obviously go with eight, um, so. Yeah, and in our case, we, we officially support, and many of us actively use J, JDK 11. For instance, ci.jenkins.io is running on JDK 11. Mm -hmm. So we're running large installations on Java 11, but, but if you've got somebody who says, no, I'm gonna run eight, then they, they really are, they've got open J9 for sure then. Yeah. You, you mentioned you didn't you swap the um, agents uh, from up above uh, to Java 11? Um, Actually, no. I'm I'm running I'm running OpenJ9 uh, eight and eleven, and right now my environment is oh. Java eight. So JDK okay. eight with uh, but that's just agents, right? So agents mm. on OpenJ on JDK eight with 
S390X and PPC. So I, I know we talked about it was like, uh, you could just totally eliminate all this confusion uh, if you just went to 11 and just to pull down hotspot or whatever you usually use. Right, um, right exactly. And, and that may be something that we want to guide people to as we get to the point of documenting it. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so S390, uh, anything particular that you wanted to note? I think I put similar things in the, in the PowerPC one because there were some that are specific PowerPC issues that have been previously reported. So okay. you, you may want to invite your PowerPC team to go exploring. Yeah, let me, I'll point them to that. I was, I was impressed at the number of, of issue reports that were there. It's like, wow, that's good. People are already doing this and it was working for them. And then likewise, I did something similar with ARM64. There, there were, again, some interesting things of people who had reported issues on ARM. All right, so now those epics, I had, I had framed them with my phrasing. Jim, you should feel free if you feel like, hey, Mark's phrased this badly, it needs to be phrased differently, smarter, better. Um, go right ahead and make those corrections. Or if you would like to put some priorities on, hey, we should do this first rather than that. Those okay. are, this is freely editable and you are welcome to, to edit and adapt. Anything else with regard to platform roadmap then? Okay. So the next topic, ARM64 status report. Um, I think there right now the answer is we know that we've got Alex, you, you had noted we've got AWS has ARM64 instances. Yeah, right? and we actually we we have uh we have them set up on um on ci.jenkins.io for in, under AWS um for virtual machine agents. So um, we just don't have anything to run on there right now. Um, so we could come up with a test and build a plugin on there um, or something like that, but we, we don't really have any workloads right now to run on there. Oh, okay. So, well, that's, I wasn't aware of that. I could have been borrowing capacity. So, so how are they labeled on ci.jenkins.io? Uh, let me look, give me just a minute. I think it's just ARM64, but let me double check. So they're not labeled with Docker or, or well, right now they're not. That's correct. Okay, and I guess that makes sense because right now our Docker images are assuming Intel mm -hmm. architecture. Right. Okay, so available. That's interesting because that means I could do some experiments with um, with certain certain plugins. They are labeled as ARM sixty four. Okay. And OpenJDK installed. They should be the exact same as the um, the the x86 Linux Great. agents. Excellent. Okay. There you bun to you bun to eighteen oh four just like the x86 or AMD sixty four. They should have the exact same setup. Wonderful. Oh, that's really great. Thank you. Okay. Good. Anything else on ARM64? Okay. So um, let's see, Matt, have you joined us? I haven't looked at participants recently. But no, he hasn't. No, okay. So we will defer this one for another time. Uh, the reason the Matt Sicker is a, is a Java or is a, an Apache, I believe board member and active participant in Apache projects and therefore follows Java release plans quite closely. So we wanted to leverage his, and he's also a, a developer on Jenkins. So we wanted to use, use his knowledge and his experience to have him share with us um, what's coming in Java. He agreed to do it, but I failed to put it on his calendar. He's based in Chicago in the United States and therefore this is a little early for him yet. So we'll defer that for another week. Then Docker PR status in progress. Alex, anything you would like to share there? 
I, I just need to go review it further in depth. I, I've done some cursory reviews and things look good, but I, I want to go and do some more in-depth stuff since it is uh, kind of a bigger change than than other ones. Yeah, so but it looked, is... it looked good off the top of just looking. This is the one that changes us to do multi-platform, is that right? That's correct. This is uh, Jim's PR. Uh, so feel free to hit me up on IRC if you have any questions. That sure, we'll do. Up. Well, and it's one that I need to get involved in, and the, it's a, it's one of those where we we it's making a major change. And if we mm -hmm. break something catastrophically, we have hundreds of thousands of people who start telling us we made a mistake. So yeah, yeah, <clears throat> it'd be nice to have more eyes on it too. Um, right, I'm not not a god when it comes to programming. I don't think any of us are. <laughs> exactly. There are plenty, plenty of, plenty of failures in in my life to remind me that I make mistakes all the time. Great. Any other topics that we need to review here in our platform special interest group? All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks very much, everyone, for being here, and we will see you in two weeks. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Mark.